Firefox, Linux, free BSD vulnerabilities, you better patch right now. And Amazon wants to make surveillance delivery drones. All that coming up now on ThreatWire. Greetings, I am Shannon Morris and this is ThreatWire for June 25th, 2019. Your summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom. It's time for a quick shout out and this one goes out to Tim, Sentian, Andreas, Brad, Ghost, Jonathan, George, David, Shree, and Chaosmonger who joined the Patreon team this week. If you are interested in supporting ThreatWire over on Patreon, hit up patreon.com slash ThreatWire. And now, on to the news. If you haven't updated Firefox lately, you might want to do so because a zero day was actively being used in the wild to exploit vulnerable browsers. The new release of Firefox by Mozilla is version 67.0.3, which patches this critical vulnerability. It was manipulating JavaScript objects due to issues in the array.pop, according to Mozilla engineers, which allows for an exploitable crash of the browser. This can be used by an attacker for remote code execution, which we all know is bad, but they would need a separate sandbox escape to run the exploit against the operating system, not just in Firefox. More on that in just a little bit. It could also be used for universal cross-site scripting as well. The CVE is 2019-11707, and it was found by Google Project Zero and the Coinbase security team. Now, two days after that patch, a second update came from Mozilla for another zero day. This one was actively being used to attack Coinbase employees and cryptocurrency organizations. The update to Firefox, which is labeled as version 67.0.4, is a sandbox escape, which allows an attacker to run malicious code on more than just Firefox, and instead on the entire operating system it runs on as well. So together, these create a really big threat if a user visited a malicious site Site where the code was running. Both of these have to do with the mining community. Coinbase's security team was involved because the attacks were targeting their employees using spear phishing emails with malicious web links. So anyone using Firefox who clicked on the malicious link would download and execute a reconnaissance program that would steal browser data. Both of these attacks hit Windows and Mac machines for several cryptocurrency organizations, not just Coinbase, according to Philip Martin, security at Coinbase. Now, it is rather uncommon for zero days to be found and responsibly disclosed within Firefox, but many vulnerabilities have been patched this year alone. Even though the latter patch is listed as high impact, while the earlier one for last week was listed as critical, it is still advisable to update fully in the event of being targeted. Amazon has been talking about delivering packages via drones for quite some time, but a new patent has given security conscious individuals some major concerns. The company received a patent earlier this month from the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office that is called Unmanned Aerial Vehicle Based Surveillance as a Service with image creation using geofence data. Its patent number is 10.313.638 and Amazon filed the patent in 2015 and they were eventually granted it on June 4th as of this year. And according to that patent, this would allow the delivery drones to check the property of an individual while out and about doing those deliveries via geofence fenced imaging. According to Amazon, the drones would only be permitted to record the consenting user's property, not neighbors or folks across the street. Now, as we have heard before, Amazon takes customer privacy very seriously. The drone footage would be opt-in by the user and would allow for monitoring of that home. So how does that geofencing work? Well, the technology would allow the drone to capture images of the user's property and anything seen outside that vicinity would be clipped or obscured from the data. Data could be stored or even sent to a separate device like your smartphone, for example. They also want to include surveillance alerts for things like a fire or movement when no one should be home. There is not a lot of data explaining the concept, only a patent describing their plans. The idea could be scrapped altogether, but if it's not, I can kind of understand Amazon's point of view, although I may disagree with it. Monitoring the physical property of a package location could minimize the chances of packages being stolen or delivered to the incorrect address. UAVs cost a lot less in the long term, but they also run the risk of being tampered with, not just from angry neighbors who don't want to see a drone in the sky, but also from cyber criminals. And given Amazon has had a brief history of security and privacy issues,
issues with their other IoT devices, I won't name them just in case anybody has them at home, I am not sure that I would be comfortable with their UAVs recording my home from outside. How would they work around apartments or townhomes? How is the data being secured or transmitted? I have a lot of questions. Before we hit story number three, I wanted to say thank you so much to my Patreon supporters. I have been adding a ton of new perks as we speak, so definitely check out patreon.com slash threatwire if you want access to extras. Also, I am introducing a new Patreon perk. For Turbo Panda patrons and up, you will receive a weekly newsletter detailing important security and privacy news from the past week. Since I only have time to cover three topics each week in the show, this is my way of bringing you more news in an easily read format so that you can see exactly what I'm researching to find news stories to share with you every single week. Also, a big thank you to our Hush Puppy Perk Level patrons for sending in their fur baby photos. We got some new ones this week and they are adorable. I love them, so keep them coming. A few Linux vulnerabilities have popped up this month that are of high importance, especially for data centers. These were found by Netflix researchers who discovered four different problems disclosed with CVEs. The issues affect Linux and FreeBSD OSs, and they allow attackers to take over and crash servers. Users are advised to patch ASAP. The first of these attacks is called a SAC panic with CVE 2019-11477, which uses TCP selective acknowledgements, or ACS, sent to a vulnerable machine. On a receiving computer, SACs let the machine communicate to the sender about which packets have completed that transmission so that the sender can resend any kind of lost packets. The system crashes or it goes into a kernel panic mode and it allows the attacker to get a remote denial of service. The second one, which is CVE ending in 11478, allows an attacker to send malicious SACs again, which will fragment the queue of TCP packet retransmission and thus degrade system performance performance or even cause a complete denial of service. The third vulnerability is similar, but it affects FreeBSD, and the fourth with CVE 2019-11479 slows down a machine by shortening the segment size for those TCP connections. Each of these vulnerabilities and their designated patches are detailed in the Netflix GitHub advisory, which is linked below in the description. And as for remediation, if you can't patch for some reason, I know a lot of servers just can't, the Netflix team does recommend blocking connections with low MSS, disable SAC processing, disable rack TCP stack on FreeBSD, and use good network hygiene like system and application coding and configuration practices. And with that, do not forget to like and subscribe. I am Shannon Morse, and I will see you next week on the internet.